Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, adjusting the valve on your Lynx 12, right? So that's this little circle thing over here. And if you look here, you're going to see there's these little holes over here, right? So there's a big hole, then there's a, one that's a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller, and then there's the tiny one, okay? Um, and uh, there's this little indent on the side here that you would push down, okay? And then you would use a vice grip while you're pushing that down a little uh, use a vice grip to rotate this now it looks like there's these little other indents on the other side it looks like there's some type of a of a of a key that is supposed to fit in there to help you rotate this um i you know i've never seen that key i uh, uh, neither of these guns shipped with that key i don't know if it's available for you to buy uh, but that would make it a lot easier right if you had that key um, so basically you gotta, you, you know, you gotta use the vice grip in order to, to rotate this. Now, if you intend to keep going back and forth with different types of ammunition, with birdshot, with slugs, with, you want to make sure that you keep your valve clean, open it up, keep it clean because it will seize up. Both these guns, the valves have seized up. Um, and when I tried moving it earlier, I saw that, you know, I didn't want to take a chance of breaking it because these guns are, mo are money makers for me. I, I need to use them like tomorrow. So I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to take a chance of cracking them. So that's why I'm not going to be. Um, I'm not going to be uh, demonstrating different types of ammunition at different valve settings. Okay, uh, but all besides that, I can still give you guys the information that you need. So uh, if you look at the valve settings, there's four settings here. The big hole is what you would use, let's say, for birdshot. That you know because that's going to allow more gas into the system. So big hole allows more gas into the system. The tiny hole, right, over here, that's going to allow the least amount of gas into the system. So if you're shooting 3-inch slugs, you're definitely going to want to be at the tiny hole, okay? Um, so here's the thing. Shotguns are very versatile, right? They, they shoot 2 and 3 quarter or 3 inch, right? Rather, the Lynx 12 is very versatile. Shoots 2 and 3 quarter or 3 inch shells. Um, it also uh, will shoot uh, birdshot. It will shoot buckshot. It will shoot slugs. So each of the, these different type of ammunition had different pressures. So you have to adjust that valve um, to what you're shooting because if the pressure's too low, the gun's not gonna cycle, right? But the way this gun works, the gas basically comes up through this block over here, hits the puck, sends this back. So it's gotta have enough pressure to send the bolt back and cycle the gun, right, in order for it to work. But if it has too much pressure, it's, it's going to basically beat up the back end of the gun, right? And it's going to break your gun sooner rather than later. Uh, so you want to you wanna match it up to the right pressure. Um, so um, on the, the two extremes here are if you're shooting birdshot, you want the big hole. If you're shooting three-inch slugs, you want the tiniest hole, right? But what about the in-between, right? Well, here's the thing. There's, a lot, there's some experimentation involved here. So I can't tell you... For this type of, of ammunition, use this hole, or for that type, use that hole. Uh, what I'm going to say is that you want to, you know, basically favor the smaller hole, right? Start with the small hole and then move your way up to the bigger hole. So, uh, let's say I was going to, because, uh, you know, let's say I was going to shoot two and three quarter inch slugs. All right. Um, any slugs, I would start with the tiniest hole, right? The smallest hole. Um, so, I would put the two and three quarter inch slugs in there. I would shoot the gun. Um, if I see that it's not cycling, all right, let's say there's not enough pressure in the system, then I would rotate it up to the bigger hole, right? So I would go from the tiniest hole to the, to the next, you know, to the slightly bigger hole. See how that works, okay? Um, so if you're shooting buckshot, right? So buckshot, I would probably, again, if I'm shooting like three inch buckshot, eh, you know, what? I, I might start with the tiniest hole, start with that. Um, if it doesn't cycle, then again, go up to a slightly bigger hole. If that doesn't cycle, go up to a slightly bigger, you know, to the other next biggest hole. Uh, if you're shooting two and three quarter inch buckshot, same thing. I would probably start with the, uh, I might start, let's say, with the, um, uh, either the, 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 the not, not the tiniest hole, but the next biggest hole. Try that out. It's probably not going to cycle. Then go to the, to the bigger hole after that. Right? So, so there's a little bit of experimentation. If, if you're... If you're shooting the gun and you see that it's working at a setting, um, go back to a small hole. See if it'll work with a slightly smaller hole. Uh, if it doesn't, go up to the next biggest hole. Uh, and keep notes. If you, sh if you shoot lots of different ammunition, um, you're going to probably want to keep a book and, and start making notes of which setting you need to, 
used for different types of ammunition. Okay. Um, now, uh, when I first got these guns, I experimented like in the first week with slugs and buckshot and that kind of stuff, uh, just to you know learn learn the gun, understand how that valve works. Uh, and after that, after that first week, um, I've done basically 100% birdshot. Okay, so I've only done birdshot. Uh, this gun over here was my first gun. Um, uh, like I said, both these guns have 15,000 rounds on them. Um, I went 8,000 rounds before I cleaned this gun for the first time. Um, so that kind of gives you an idea of why my valve setting is, is seized up over here, okay? Um, so don't do that. I'm not, I'm not putting that out there as an example for you guys to follow. I'm putting that out there as an example for you guys not to follow, okay? Um, clean the valve, if you intend, especially if you intend to use the valve and shoot different types of ammunition. Make sure your valve is clean so that you're able to rotate it to where you need it to be, okay? Um, so what I want to do, uh, let me uh, open up this gun right here. So, uh, this is the recoil spring. This is the second one I put in, right? So, I, I think the first time I changed it was somewhere around, uh, somewhere between eight and 10,000 rounds. I don't remember the exact number. Um, and if, so, it, it's got at least six, 7,000 rounds since, since I changed this recoil spring. And if you look at the rubber back here, uh, it's like almost new, right? It's got a couple of marks over here. The, the little side plate here, that, that came off, right? But the rubber is in really con good condition after six, seven thousand rounds. Okay, so if if you if you just bought Lynx 12, right, and you're shooting buckshot or slugs, um, open up your open up the gun. Look at this little piece of rubber here. If you've only shot, let's say, a hundred rounds through the gun, and you see that this rubber is getting like all chewed up, that's a good indication that that um, you you got too much gas. You're using, you're using too much gas. You need to change your valve setting. Um, to a smaller hole. Okay, so so that's the thing to look at because, like I said, this piece of rubber here has six, seven thousand rounds on it, and it's like almost new, right? So that's something to, to keep an eye on. That's something that will give you an indication. Um, okay, so but uh, yeah, there's a little experimentation involved. If you're shooting birdshot, um, yeah, you're definitely gonna need that big, you know, especially if it's like cheap birdshot, right? If you're shooting like three inch buckshots, I'm sorry, if you're shooting birdshot. You're going to need the big hole. If you're shooting, let's say, three-inch bird shots, um, you might need to go up to the slightly to, to, to the slightly smaller hole. But that's just experimentation. you got to try it out. If you, you know, try it out, if it doesn't work, if it doesn't cycle, then go back to the biggest hole. Um, now, you guys might be wondering, why am I only shooting bird shot through these guns? Um, I did a, um, you know, because a lot of times when people think of the Lynx 12, they're thinking, oh, self-defense, they're going to use buckshot, they're going to use slugs, or, you know. Um, I did a video on um, using the Lynx 12 for self-defense. Um, and I think that there's better options out there. I think an AR-15 is a better option. I think an AK-47 is a better option. Um, now, these part of the reason is, is reliability. Now, my guns are very reliable, okay? But here's the thing. Um, these Lynx 12s, they're made in China. I don't know where in China they're made. I don't know if they're all made in the same factory. Uh, somebody made a comment in one of my uh, that they are made in the same factory where the wrinkles are made. Uh, but you know, I, I can't go over there and double check them and check them out. I, I don't know. Um, I don't know if they're getting the parts from the same place. Um, so, and the reason why I'm saying this is because people have made comments uh, in the past that that they just bought a Lynx 12 and it's not cycling birdshot or you know they're getting jams or whatever. Um, and you know, and, and I, I believe them, but I can't explain why their guns are not reliable while my guns are. Um, other than to say that, hey, I mean, these things are imported from China. I don't know what kind of quality control they go through. I don't know if the one you got went through the same quality control that, that mine went through. So I, I don't know. So that's why I usually tell people, you know, stick to like mil spec AR 15s. Um, they're made to a, to a minimal standard, right? It doesn't even mean that it's, uh, it's a high standard. It's made to a minimal standard. Um, and the other thing is, if your AR 15 breaks, Listen, everybody's got parts for AR-15s. Everybody knows how to fix AR-15s. Um, so the question becomes, what's the purpose of these guns, right? Why do I, why do I use these guns? Um, these guns, right, allow me to, uh, to train people 
in such a way that I can't do it with AR-15s. Because with AR-15s, usually we're shooting at steel targets that are stationary, right? Um, you know, the best I can do, right, to try to get people to sort of think on their feet is to, like, call out targets uh, or tell people if they miss, shoot until they actually hit the target. Um, but with the Lynx 12, right, I can have people shoot at clay discs using the bird shot, right, because the bird shot is safe to shoot into the air because it's only going to go out for about 200 feet. Um, and here's the thing, with the bird shot, I can say, well, because when you throw the, when you throw the clay disc out there, you don't know where the clay disc is going to go. So I might say, well, I only want you to shoot it if it's in this zone or in that zone, um, or um, if if it if it let's say it splits in half. I want you to completely destroy it. So um, using these Lynx 12s and and clay discs with birdshot, I'm able to kind of teach people to think on their feet. You know, I'm able to say, okay, find the target, get your reticle on the target, shoot the target, assess, did you do a good enough job? If not, shoot again, and then repeat the cycle. Um, I'm able to do that in such a way that I can't do with AR-15s and AK-47s, right? So I kind of use this to kind of bridge the gap. This fills in, um, you know, certain areas of training that I can't do with an actual AR-15 because, you know, I can't sit because I can't have people shooting play discs with AR-15s, right? Um, you know, same same thing applies, let's say, with uh, airsoft training, right? With, you know, with airsoft training, I can do certain types of role-playing scenarios um, where, you know, where we can actually, you know, because here's the thing, when, when you're training, right, you're either going to have real guns and fake targets, right, like we got out there, or, or you're going to have fake guns and real targets. And by real targets, I mean people, okay? So with airsoft or paintball, right, if you're, te if you're treating it realistic, um, you know, and, and working in different certain types of scenarios and getting people to think, you know, I'm able to to take the training to a whole different level. Okay, so 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 it's kind of the same thing here. Like you between airsoft and also shooting the Lynx 12 with a clay disc, and then also doing like AR training uh, and pistol training, I'm able to like um, do like a complete type of training. Um, and where one type of training falls short, right? So for, such as if you're only shooting at fake targets, right, that don't think and don't shoot back, um, you know, I can I can kind of bridge those gaps by using different, you know, in one case using the Lynx 12, in another case, you know, using uh, Airsoft or Paypal or whatever. Um, so that's why the, the Lynx 12 is such a great training tool, um, you, know, you know, when used with clay disc shooting. Um, and, you know, that's why I, I use it so much and why each of these guns have like 15,000 rounds on it. Okay? Um, but, yeah, for self-defense, I use people go with the thing that, that you know is going to work. AR-15s, AK-47s, you know, your backup pistols should probably be a Glock or a SIG. Um, so th those are my thoughts on that. So I hope this video was helpful uh, in terms of how to use the gas valve. Right, the adjustable valve here. And the, and the thing to remember is the big circle means more gas is being let into the system. The tiny circle means less gas is being let into the system. Um, and, you know, you got you know, you to be willing to experiment a little, a little bit with it, right? Uh, you know, try to, see, try to, you know, go to that smaller hole and see if the gun will still cycle. Right? If it doesn't cycle, then you just go back up to the bigger hole. You know, it's that easy, okay? But, yeah, you don't want to be shooting let's say buckshot or slugs out of like the biggest hole there which is going to allow the maximum amount of you know allow a lot of pressure into the system which is going to beat up the the back end of the gun over here so um drop some comments i'd love to hear from you guys if you found this video useful let me know uh if you're not a member of the channel subscribe give me a thumbs up thanks a lot talk to you guys next time